about the right to have uh, health insurance. Every country in the world who's civilized, every uh, industrialized country, does have a national health care plan. They do not pay a whole bunch of different companies 30% of the actual insurance costs, leaving only 70% for your actual health care. They cover everything and everybody. This is for you. Think about this. Remember, you're number one in the whole wide universe. Beautiful views of the uh, the county, and we just have such such glorious, glorious vistas here uh, between the woods and the hills and the streams and the mountains and the and the the little lakes and the creek. Oh, it's just beautiful. It, this is this is a place to live. Don't tell anybody else about it down south. We like it as it is. <laughs> I guess we could use a few tourists. <laughs> Being as how that's the only real industry we've got. And of course, they make sure that less tourists will come because they charge them for a, a snowmobile <laughs> license when they cross the border. They got to go through all that and get a registration, which you don't have to re-register your car or anything. But oh yeah, on the most snowmobile you do, and a hunting license. They've jacked them up if you want to come over for a day or two of hunting and spend the time here in our motels and restaurants and whatever, bars, whatever. Hundred sixty dollars. $160, I can go down and buy twice the beef I'd get if I shot a deer. <laughs> get an average of $50 off a deer. And so little stupid things like that. We've got to straighten these folks out. Our only real big industry in Chautauqua County is tourism. Let's encourage it, not discourage it. Got a guy here quite involved in that, uh, Marty Bova. Marty Bova is celebrated in our community. He spent many years uh, patrolling Lake Chautauqua. He is a uh, master boatsman. He also is a trainer over at our uh, county offices, and he is the mayor of beautiful Mayville. Good morning, Marty. Good morning. I how thank are you? you. I'm fine, uh, considering how old I am. <laughs> yeah, you're not that old, Reed. <laughs> well, Sam, why don't you pull up a little closer? Then they can get they can get up a little closer on a screenshot for us. And uh, they still can't see my whiskers. You know, I discovered uh, 30 years ago that on television, two days of growth won't show up. The third day, you start looking a little uh, five o'clock shadowy. <laughs> hey, you look good on the TV. Yeah, well, considering my <laughs> age, right? <laughs> Marty Bova, um, well, what's your background? Where'd you go to school? Where were you born? I was born in Westfield. Westfield. And I went to high school at Westfield Academy in Central uh -huh. School, all through K through 12, and graduated from there. And then I went to uh, Jamestown Community College uh -huh. for two years. <clears throat> then I went to Fredonia State for a semester. And while I was there, I had an opportunity to go to the Sheriff's Academy. And so I went through the Sheriff's Academy and then just got right into the police business and uh, regretfully never went back and finished my four-year degree. Well, you'll still have time for that. A lot of people, when they retire, go back to college. Yeah. Not, that, not that it really matters. I, could. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I'm getting to that age now where I'm thinking about retirement. Um, don't have any definite plans yet. but. Uh -huh. When the time comes, I'm, I know I'm mindful of the fact that when I retire, I'll be in my 50s, and I'm going to want to go do something else for a little while. I'm not going to just want to retire. Even if I get a part-time job doing something, I want to stay busy. Well, busyness is part of uh, I, a retirement, really, in a sense. You've got to keep busy. You could join the fire department. I've been a member of the fire department <laughs> for 30 years. I'm a past fire chief from Mayville Fire Department. Okay, there you go. So you put yeah. in really wonderful time. That, well, that's the greatest gift yeah. to your community. It, it is. You know, a firefighter. And I can't say enough good about the volunteer firemen because mm -hmm. these men and women put in countless hours training, doing equipment maintenance, attending meetings, and they do it all for the good of the community. And there's no other profession where there is such a strong following of a volunteer group. 
Police agencies have an auxiliary group that ride along with the officers as an extra body, an extra set of hands. But with the volunteer fire service, they do it all. They do exactly what a paid fire department can do, and they do it all for free. And I, I just, I cannot thank them enough. We had a, an appreciation dinner last October down at the Chautauqua Suites uh, for the volunteer fire departments in this area. And I was asked to speak, so I just did a quick little research on the minimum staffing and what it would cost if we had to pay these people. And without figuring in overtime or vacation time where you had to backfill a shift, we are well over a million dollars just for the village of Mayville to have yeah, a man. fire department that would be paid. So I mean, that's, that's huge. And you know, sometimes the guys I don't think really get enough appreciation for what they do. And yeah. it's, you know, I can't say enough good about them. Any fire department, whether it's Mayville, Westfield, Chautauqua, anyone in the county, Silver Creek, they're all, they're all brothers and sisters of the same uh, mindset, and they really want to do the right thing. Well, thank you uh, on behalf of the public for uh, announcing that. Uh, the, the, uh, of course, one of the things that, uh, is, uh, fire department's kind of a mis misnomer up here in a small way. It's actually fire emergency department because we have 10 calls with our ambulance for people who are dying or very badly injured or whatever usually uh, for every fire call we get. And it's just, uh, we, we, we save lives right and left. We run, here in Mava, we run well over 400 calls a year and most of the calls are EMS related. Yep, uh, we emergency get, services. We, we get a few fires. Um, we get a few car accidents every year, but for the most part, they're, they're EMS-related, um, transports to the hospital, slips and falls, um, general illnesses. Um, but they, you know, I, again, you know, they're getting, these people are getting up at 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, going on a call that right now takes our people about an hour to complete because we're going to Westfield Hospital. If they have to go to WCA or Brooks, it's probably going to be more like two hours to complete the call from start to finish. And, you know, they're, they're just asking an awful lot if they do close Westfield, which is a whole other subject, and that's something that we're all hoping doesn't happen. Yeah, we're hoping Mr. Uh, Diaz, is it, who is uh, the guy in charge, Richard, down in uh, Albany. He's the head of the public, uh, of the public health for the state of New York. Commissioner Dane. Dane. Mr. Yes. Dane. Richard Dane. And he's the one who's going to decide. He is the one that's going to make the final decision and from what I've learned when the original Burger Commission did the study on West Hill Hospital they s said in their study that they recommended Westfield Hospital stayed open as an emergency care and an emergent care facility. The sole, as I understand it, the sole decision on whether or not to close rests with Commissioner Dane. The hospital has done a phenomenal job. They've spent tens of thousands of dollars sending letters to the people in Albany, uh, doing everything that they can. They've gone to uh, Albany personally. They've had key people get involved in this. And I think they're hearing us in Albany. I think they're, they're getting the message, and I believe from what I understand that the people in Albany uh, have stated that they are willing to work with Westfield Hospital. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that it's going to stay open as, as an emergency facility. And mainly because it would affect so many people, especially seniors. We have a large number of seniors here, and uh, if they have to go 40 minutes before they get any kind of medical aid uh, in a hospital, it's probably over for most of them. We got a couple of calls. You want to take a call, Marty? Sure. Good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning, Reed. How are you? Wonderful. What's up? Um, my question, not to change the subject or anything, but uh, I was watching uh, Randy Burt's uh, Carlson Center, and uh, somewhere in there, I think there was something about you kissing a pig, or what? maybe maybe he said something to me about <laughs> that. I was just I was just wondering what what the you want to know the scoop on that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Mabel Chautauqua Lions Club was doing a fundraiser. They were raising money for the Mayville Food Pantry. And what they did was they came to myself, 
uh, County Executive Edwards and Town of Chautauqua Supervisor Don Emhart.